Right, 10, so now Canada gets the ball back here. I'm here with myself, Marlene Donaldson, and Heather Moyes. This is Trinidad's ball. Oh, Canada's ball. Knock on Trinidad's ball. Not quite the start that Canada was hoping for, I don't think, but it's all about recovering and turning it around, so hopefully that was it. Out of their system, now they can settle down and get back into the game. Nice aggressive scrum there for Trinidad. We're going to see what the, she finds a hole around the around the tackle. Ball comes out quickly, and Canada's there to take that pass. Megan Gibbs, she's a feisty player. Trinidad's being really aggressive there at the ruck. A little chip by Magaly, but she gets knocked down there, so she won't be there to capture the ball. Trinidad has the ball. But Ariel Duba said it almost had it there. Nice tackle there by Magali. And they're really keeping them back there in the five meter. Canada will take this ball here at the five meter. Probably tired on the second day of a, a sevens tournament. A lot of these girls are, are feeling the, the all the work they did on the first day, and they might be a little tired, but that's just the nature of sevens. You got to keep going. Part of the reason why they work so much on fitness. Nice distribution by Julianne Zussman. She's had a great tournament. Ball doesn't get right to hand there. Julianne Zussman had a great first day. And Megan Gibbs is right there with a great pass out. Easy try for Canada on the right-hand side of the field. <laughs> Moise, what do you think, uh, what do you think this day is gonna be like for Canada today? Um, I think that, like you said, they're probably feeling a little, a little bit from the first day of a sevens tournament. Um, yesterday they had a few games and it's, it's, uh, they are going to be feeling it, but Canada is an extremely fit team and they've been, you know, centralized out in uh, Victoria for the last six months. So they're, they're all coming in here extremely fit and they work a ton on their cardio. And so, you know, they're also mixing it up and rotating people in and out. Now Trinidad is going to be a different team from the teams that they met yesterday. Trinidad is a bigger team than any of the teams we saw them Canada play yesterday and they're, they're quite physical. Um, so today it'll be, you know, it'll be a hard-fought game. Anyway, we'll see how this ha how it, how it turns out. It is a good point. Canada's come to this tournament with about 12 players, and they're really mixing it up. It's a real uh, a bit, uh, chance for the coaches to see different players play. Um, you know, some girls are aren't on this team that you would normally see playing out here. But there's definitely some uh, definitely demonstrating the sort of depth that the can Canadian program has right now. Um, so it's a great opportunity to see what what how we can build for the future. And Trinidad has the ball. Moving it out wide. They're trying to get it out wide. Um, a little bit of running sideways, and that makes it really difficult. And I think that's what Trinidad's struggling with right now, is, is the ability to get that pass out without running sideways at the same time. Another scrum there. So Heather, are you missing playing, playing sevens? You haven't played for a couple years. What have you been doing for the last little while? <laughs> Oh, I've been doing a little of this, a little of that. I've been doing some traveling and bobsledding and cycling and keeping myself busy. But it is, watching this game, you do, you do miss it. Anyone who's played rugby, uh, definitely miss it. Oh, what a great break. Great job by Magali Harvey right through the middle. And she puts that ball down with a, a real confidence there. That was a great, that was really a great sidestep by, by Harvey. Just all she had to do was one little step and take that break through the middle. So that's, 
she's uh, getting quite known for that. I think her little dodge step and finding that hole. Megley's really uh, taking the season and she's building her confidence. Uh, she, she started off to a good start and she's had some struggles along the way in her in her in this uh, year in centralization. But you can tell that her confidence is growing and I think she definitely has her eye on the prize and I think her goal is to be there in the 2016 Olympics. So keep your eye on her. Well, it's a good goal to have. <laughs> She does remind me a little bit of a former Canadian player, Megan Moutry. A little bit of her style of play, very shifty, very... I was going to say, they don't look anything alike, <laughs> so I hope you're going to follow that up with something else. Style of play, <laughs> style of play, Marlene. Trinidad, I'm definitely seeing uh, uh, in the breakdown that Trinidad's really working hard there. Uh, but they're getting pushed back a little. I think it's just not as cohesive. And this, they're getting pushed back. Canada's defense is just a bit too aggressive. Not for them, sorry, it's great defense. Um, but I don't know, know if Trinidad is uh, able to handle it. And they're getting around there. Another try for Canada. And that try was scored by number 12, Amanda Thornborough. Amanda is a, a member of the St. FX rugby program. Again, one of our newer uh, members of the, of the, of the program. And again, when you have these, uh, when you're, it's your first tournament and you have these moments to show, show the coaches what you can do, scoring a try is always a nice way of doing it. Try for Canada, scored by number 12, Amanda. Joyce, were you one of those, uh, you know, slide in and cool score the try, uh, uh, put it down with one hand? Uh, what, 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 kind of, what kind of tries do you generally score? Uh, are you leading the witness? <laughs> yeah, well, if nobody's around, I just pop it down with one hand or two if the coach is watching. Um, uh, sometimes if there's pressure on, you just slide it in. You just slide in on one great, leg. Great take by Megan Gibbs. She's a real shifty player. She, uh, she's uh, deceptively difficult to tackle sometimes. Uh, she's so shifty. She <laughs> moving, moving, moving it out again. Canada's doing a great job of moving the ball wide. And they're making it look really easy right now. Um, getting out to the, to the outsides of the, of the field, away from the defense, and making these tries look very, very easy. And that was Julia Greenshields. And the score right now. I'll tell you in just a moment. I just want to make sure. And that kick is good by Magley Harvey. And the score right now is 24 nothing for Canada. It's now half. So what, go ahead. That's the halftime. Now, that's the di big difference between 15s and 7s. Seven. Sevens only get a minute at halftime. I mean, besides the fact that the games are only seven-minute halves until our, until our final, but it's not a lot of time for a coach to get out and say exactly what needs to happen in the next half and how they can change things up and do catch their breath. I guess the preparation even before the game and during the game for sevens versus fifteens, there is there is definitely a difference, a different culture. And I know I was talking to some of the ladies, and uh, before fifteens games, there's generally a tendency to, you know, not get necessarily serious, but you know, get focused and get sort of pumped up. And um, you know, everyone has their different way. And a lot of the girls from the sevens team were saying like, they actually because they have to be more relaxed, they're they're dancing, they're listening to music, they're <laughs> they're having a little bit more of a uh, more lighthearted. Uh, uh, time in the change room just to sort of not get them so wound up for a sevens game where you really have to be able to not be so, you know, a bit more relaxed and, and be able to focus on, you know, what you have to do on the field. So just a different energy before the games going into these games uh, than probably what most people would think uh, before uh, if you've played 15s. And right now at halftime, I think that, you know, the Canadian coach, John Tate, is probably telling the girls to clean it up a little bit, try and be a little more patient on the breakdown so that they're getting cleaner ball. And I think that, um, Kitty Andrews Nero, who's the coach for the Trinidad team, I mean, she went into this, uh, you know, believing that Canada was going to be their top rival in this tournament. So I knew that Canada was going to, you know, they wanted to give Canada at least a run for their money. So I'm sure that she had a few words to say to that Trinidad team at halftime to, to regroup, keep their heads, you know, keep up the intensity because 
it can, it can be very deceptive when we're watching Canada with the, some of the scores they've been putting out and uh, just thinking, oh, they're, they're having a great game, but they're actually very, very critical of their performances. And sometimes things that we wouldn't even notice, just the people who are watching who may not have a lot of knowledge of the sevens, um, it may look nice, but they're actually looking at very specific things in their game, and, and they're not always happy with how they perform regardless of the score. So they're, like you said, they're going to be looking to really, to really clean it up and reduce the errors and, and uh, you know, preparing, they're preparing for a larger goal, which is obviously the 2013 World Cup coming up. That was a good take by Trinidad on the kickoff. A little fumble there. We have Kaylin Maleshi, and for those that don't know the numbering system there, we have, uh, there are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is fairly obvious. Um, similar to the 15s, but obviously less numbers. One, two, three being in the front row. Uh, four being the some scrum half position, uh, five being that sort of first receiver, which is like a fly half, and then you have your two other players on the outside, which are, um, you have your seven who's a sweeper. So those are how those positions are sort of identified. And they don't relate to the actual numbers on the back of their jerseys. And there's Kayla Maleshi picking up that ball, using her speed, again, one of the faster girls on the team, and she's a very strong player. That was just a good individual try. Saw an opportunity and she took it. And in a game of sevens, you really need to just back yourself. So the stands are filling up. This is now the first day of the, uh, the second day of the tournament and the first game of the second day. And people are slowly coming in. Marlene, I'm noticing some more costumes today than we saw yesterday. More costumes. Sevens is uh, notorious for the stands being filled with people in costumes and suits, and especially Hong Kong Sevens. Hong Kong Sevens is probably the, the, the most stands are just filled with wigs and, you know, zoot suits and huge hats and, like, full-on makeup done to the nines, and it's, it's almost like a big Halloween party. You mentioned earlier that you've been to a, a couple of these big tournaments, Hong Kong Sevens. What was, what, were the, what was the atmosphere like at these tournaments? Like, what was that like for you? Uh, seven, well, Hong Kong was insane. It was uh, a stadium that holds 45,000 people. And uh, the energy in there was pretty unreal. It was pretty unreal. And here we have Canada fighting for that ball, but Trinidad has it. And again, they're holding on to the ball a little bit longer um, than they probably would like to be, because which is making it easier for the Canadian defense to come up hard as they're coming up very quickly and making these tackles. So if they're getting these passes, they need to be getting perfect passes and be passing out. But they found a break there. They found a break. And that looks like... Looks like number seven, Quinise John. Quinise, pardon me for speaking to them yesterday. It's Quinise John with the break down the sidelines. And Canada has the ball again. She had a good run there. But again, the Canadian defense was able to get back. And I think that might be Bianca Farella. And that is Bianca yes. Farella. Again, we were uh, sharing with the viewers yesterday, Bianca Farella is probably one of the fastest, fastest girls on the squad. Um, and now she's also one of the new, new members, and we can look forward to seeing a lot more from her. That was a good attempt, a good effort, a good run on the other side by Quinnis John, but when you go alone and you don't have the support behind you, as soon as you get tackled, it gives a huge opportunity for the opposing team, and in this case, Canada, to just pick that ball and, and take off with it, and that's exactly what we saw, and it resulted in a try. In sevens, unlike 15s, there are huge gaps, and often when there's a breakdown, it means that there are so many holes in which people can you know, just run through, and, and that's what happened in this case. So that was a good, good run and good pick by Bianca. Yeah, and it's also a, a testament to Canada's defense. Ten Canada plays a very aggressive de defense, but a very controlled defense. And, you know, she had that great break. Trinidad had, had that great break on the outside, but Canada was still able to get back, reorganize, and then, then get the ball back and score a try. We're back to another kickoff. A few substitutions here for both teams, putting on some fresh legs. Substitutes are, are crucial for the, in the sevens game. Um, you see Jen Kish running after the ball. She's just come on the field. And we know that Jen Kish is a very exciting player. She's uh, the captain of the squad at this tournament. 
um, and she's definitely one of the stars of this team. Um, not at the tournament, who are actually um, sort of become more popular players on the team are players like Mandy Marchek, Ashley Patzer, um, girls that would normally be at uh, tournaments like this, but you know, they're, they're, the coaches are making various decisions in, in preparation for uh, the big events to come. So today, this, this, at this tournament, Jen is definitely stepping up. And what a break by Bianca again. Just breaks that tackle. Power and speed are a lethal combination in this game. And definitely Bianca has that. So, Heather, is there any other tournaments that you attended while you're during your uh, your sort of uh, ex time with the Sevens program? With the Sevens program, it was the Hong Kong Sevens tournament and the Amsterdam Sevens tournament. And those were back in 2008. Um, unfortunately, I broke my shoulder at the very end of the, the tournament, so it was uh, kind of delayed the, the whole Sevens, put everything on hold for Sevens for a bit. I know a lot of people, you've been getting a lot of questions about uh, whether you're continuing to play rugby or not continuing to play rugby. and what are your sort of general thoughts to maybe quiet the viewers or not, <laughs> or maybe keep them guessing? <laughs> well, right now I, they know about as much as I do. Um, I don't know. You just you just start missing it after a little while, and who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Keep, keep us guessing. I, that's what I say. <laughs> never, never give people too much. Perfect. You know? Perfect. We'll just keep people guessing for a little bit. <laughs> for those who aren't familiar with Heather Moy, she's um, obviously a member of the has been a member of the national sevens and fifteens team. Um, she was has been one of the high try scorers at both World Cups in 2006-2010. She's also a gold medalist at the 2010 Winter Olympics for bobsleigh. So if you didn't know, now but, you know. But I can't cook, so. <laughs> but, but she can't cook. She really <laughs> sucks. Good. Okay, we see Ariel, not, that's not Ariel, sorry, that's uh, Trinidad and Tobago being quite, ag quite aggressive here again. And the ball's out for Trinidad. And again, Trinidad, I mean, but the way they're struggling is just that they're not getting those passes off um, as accurately as they need to be getting them off. Um, the skill of passing in the game of sevens is just so essential. But that's game. And that's it. And that's it. And that's how the cookie crumbles. And Canada has won it again. Final score, 39-0. They start off this day two of NACRA Sevens Championships with a bang.